Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living in retirement having. When a man came to a campus over a year ago now, he came with the intentions of finding new opportunities. The reason he would come to a college town is a couple, well, technical reasons. One, he is proficient in teaching a foreign language, and at that college they actually teach that language. He made the mistake of running into a gentleman who was a telecommunications or TV producer for the campus. And the mistake became the fact that that man started to pro promote information that he had given privately to the language instructor. He did not like that because it didn't give him the right to provide himself the proper introduction in Japanese to the professors of that community. You see, someone who doesn't understand Japanese culture would not understand that that professor might feel threatened by me. His handling could make them feel more threatened in their jobs than they need to. The truth is the campus doesn't have a lot of Japanese. That I have proven, and that most of the students of foreign lands know. But what we have in America is the right to pursue our higher education and pursue employment. We've never asked anyone to try to promote someone's employment, unless, of course, they are a personally close friend of the individual and truly knows what the goals are of that individual with regard to what they're looking for, the salary requirements that they need, and openly what it is that they can do to serve a particular company. That's the whole purpose of LinkedIn today. LinkedIn began as an online resume center. And over the course of time, of course, as it has expanded, of course, as many more people are getting on it, there's greater costs for that company. So, of course, it's very important that they offer different ranges of usage. But here's the deal. If we don't know exactly what we're getting, even for free, we can't establish that what we pay for is getting us any further along the job hunt role. What we learn is that all these social media networks are used by companies, but how are they using them? It used to be, at least five years ago, that social media was in the positive light, that corporations were really valuing the feedback that they could get from someone who went home after shopping all day and gave it to them at night. You see, once they get one comment, whether it be positive or whether it be negative, they had the opportunity to do a lot of things. They had the opportunity to gain information on what products people loved, what people they cared for in their companies, or they got opportunities to learn about what people needed better training or better language to handle difficult situations. You see, the whole value of feedback is a financial benefit to a corporation because one negative comment can actually represent about 250 people that just don't give a shit enough about your company to try to help you fix it. But someone who's a secret shopper, someone who's a consumer rights advocate like me, which we all have the right to do, in the dignity of America, we all make a living. Whether it's modest in a missionary or a pastor, he still has to make purchases for his organization. Or whether it's a person of great interest in a community, a real affluent and influential leader, they still have to make purchases. But what we know when we walk into any retail shop or restaurant is the person serving us has no clue who we are, what we do for a living, how much money's in our bank account, how much content's in our wallet, and the truth is it shouldn't matter to them because that's discrimination. Obviously, the more the person pays for across the board of what they're buying, then we have a better sense of how influential or affluential they are or what their projects are. But the truth is you never know where a person may rise or when a person may fail. And in a time of epidemic and a time of pandemic, any human being can lose a job today. And any human being doesn't always know where to go to find another job today. The social media networks are companies and our organizations like Twitter that promote jobs that they're posting. So when you have an employee in your company, a retail employee who makes a paltry 10 to $12 an hour, maybe 20 at most, but they start getting involved with hacking other people who are visiting their shop or sitting outside or thinking about purchases with you, regardless, you're offering them free Wi-Fi. They as an employee do not have the right to monitor or hack what you're doing on that Wi-Fi. It's really truthful. 
because when they start to interfere, your social media accounts can be totally monkeyed with by an employee who's just bored and isn't willing to do their actual job.